In this episode, we're going to make rapid contrast and color adjustments using Photoshop's lab color mode and go from here to here. Hi there, Michael Volchinich here once again. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash VibrantShot and also visit VibrantShot.com for a number of written articles and tutorials. So in this video, uh, we're going to be looking at how you can easily improve the color and contrast of this particular image using LAB color mode or lab color mode in Photoshop. Now, first off, a big thanks to my friend Nagesh Mahadev for letting me use one of his images for this demo and just be sure to check out more of his amazing work at the link below. So uh, basically what we're going to try and do is, uh, this is sort of our original image here and it's more or less a raw file that we just you know, did some adjustment on using camera raw uh, and, and nothing too much beyond that. So what we want to do is just create a little bit more separation between some of these colors because right now it looks like you know everything is, we have a little bit of a magenta cast here and so the, the, the colors are all kind of blending together and there's not enough pop in between them. And there's also a little bit of contrast missing up here in the mountains so we're going to try and bring some of that out. And essentially this is sort of the final effect that we're going for. So basically what we need to do is if we're starting off with our image, you know, chances are we're not starting off with an image that is in LAB or lab color mode. Um, we probably just got, you know, standard RGB mode. So what we, what I generally tend to do as a workflow is to make the adjustments I need to in the image. Um, so you can either do this uh, at the beginning or at the end of your workflow. It really doesn't matter. But basically we're going to be starting off with our image. So, you know, this, this contains our image here essentially. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a stamp visible layer of that. So command option shift E or control alt shift E if you're using a PC. That creates a stamp visible layer for us. And now what we want to do to get it into lab color mode because we don't want to be toggling between RGB and lab color mode back and forth because there is a degradation of quality that sort of happens as you go back and forth. So what we want to do is we want to keep our main image in RGB but then we want to make some adjustments in lab and then get it back into our RGB image. So let's go ahead and once we've got our stamp visible layer, what we need to do is we need to duplicate this layer out. So what we're going to do is we're going to just either right click that and go to duplicate layer or you can um, hit, hit option and then drag down into the new uh, layer icon at the bottom here. You need to do that because you can't hit command J, um, otherwise you won't get this, uh, this pop-up menu here, which is what we need because we want to put it out to a new file. So we're going to create a new file and we're going to call it um, demo lab. So with that in place, what we need to now do is go into image mode and we need to change it to lab color. So once we do that, the first thing you'll notice if you go into your channels um, panel over here, we see that we now have the lab mode. We don't have the, the red, green, and blue that you're probably accustomed to in here. We have lightness, we have an A channel, and we have a B channel. So basically this is how it kind of breaks down. So essentially when you, whenever it comes to making adjustments to um, colors within LAB color mode, you're primarily going to be using the curves adjustment layer. You can also use levels, which I'll briefly touch on, but for the most part, you're going to be focused on the curves adjustment. So going down into our uh, adjustment filters over here at the bottom, you'll notice that certain filters are not available in LAB mode. So essentially things like channel mixer is gone, selective color is gone, so you, you can't use those. Uh, and again, we're going to be primarily focusing on levels and curves, but just to make you aware, certain things are not going to be available for you in here. So what we're going to basically do is let's just take a look at levels quickly. Um, I'm not really going to use it in the context of this image, but I'll kind of show you how it will work uh, within the LAB mode. So essentially lightness is um, you know pretty standard. It works kind of like uh, standard levels adjustment within uh, the RGB mode, but it's a little bit different. So basically you can kind of just slide through here and as you can see we're, we're taking the midtones and whatnot. But you'll actually see once we start working on curves that it does work a little bit different than it does in RGB mode. So let's just go in here um, and this is where you're going to need to go to actually adjust color. So lightness obviously will, will take your uh, your lightness levels up and down, but if you want to adjust the color values then you have to go into the A channel and the B channel. So in the A channel, basically um, what happens is if we start kind of dragging down here, we see that we're basically making a color shift. So we're shifting more towards blue as we go in here. So it's adding a little bit more blue, a sort of cyan tone into here and also into the grass. If we go from the other side, then as we can see, we're adding uh, some reddish sort of magenta tones essentially into the image. And then in the middle, we're kind of shifting again in between those two. So we're, we're more on the blue and then more on the magenta side. 
So that's something that you can use if you've got some color casts in your image. You can kind of go through and play with that to see if uh, you can find a, a satisfactory result with that. But um, again, I tend to use curves for the actual adjustment itself. So just kind of showing you what happens here. Um, and then if we switch to the B channel, it's kind of a similar um, idea, except rather than adding cyan, we're adding more of a blue tone. And then rather than adding magenta, we're adding kind of like this, this more reddish orange tone here. So that's basically what we're getting in between those two. So now that we've kind of covered that, we're not really going to uh, look at that in detail. We're really going to be focusing on the curves adjustment because 95% of the time, that's what you're going to be using to make your color adjustments. So going into curves here, um, the first thing I want to do is try and fix this portion in the mountain here. I want to actually create some separation between the blacks and the lighter colors here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, this picker essentially. So click on that, and what happens is as we kind of drag along, it's going to tell us where we are in that curve. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select this darker color over here. So basically this, you know, almost black portion within the mountain. So let's just pick somewhere in around there. And then I'm going to select this lighter portion somewhere near the middle here. And what I'm basically looking for is I don't want the dots to be too close together. So if I were to pick something in between here, I see that they're a little close. So I want to just find an area where we do get a bit of separation. So clicking on that, now we've got two points on our curve. So what we can do is we can just use the up and down keys to tweak those points. So now if we see that we start punching that up, we're essentially um, boosting the contrast between those two colors. Now if we hit the minus key, it's going to take us down to this lower point. And again, we can play with that. And that's again, further creating more separation. Now that's great. We've added some contrast in there and that looks good, but we don't really want to affect this area. So what I want to do now is using the same picker I want to actually select from here sample that out and you know what let me just go back on that ah, sorry about that let's just go back in and go through that one more time unfortunately the undo does not let you go back in terms of points it only lets you go through uh, the steps of actually applying those filters so let's just go back into lightness here we're going to pick those points once again just going through here I'm going to quickly pick this point and then this point here and as we saw before, we're just going to boost this one and lower this one a little bit. Okay, so that gets us to where we want to be. So again, what I'm looking for here is a point that's going to be somewhere um, in and around here. So I think this is this is probably going to be pretty good right there. And now what I want to do is just bring that back up using my up keys. And there we go. So we, we again, took care of the, the brightness level within that portion of the color range, um, but we're still maintaining our contrast there. What we can do is we can add additional dots if we want to. So for example, anywhere up here, we can add an additional dot and just see what happens if we bring that back up. So that it looks like we're in this sort of green section here. So we can manually tweak that. And then if we add another one over here, we can also independently adjust that. So that looks like it's our sky. So it's more in the blue range. So I think that's, that's pretty good where we are right there. Now, the next thing we're going to do is go into our A and B channels and start experimenting with those. So essentially, when you're making changes to the A and B channels, um, what we, as you can see, we've basically got color values or, or information within this narrow band. So where we can really adjust is typically on the edge points. So we can adjust here where we have sort of a, an edge. So we can add a dot here and we can add one there and we can add one there as well. What we also want to do is just create a little bit of separation between these colors. So I think that I'm just going to click down here click here and add another point here. And now we're, again, we're going to sort of independently adjust these. So as we bring them down, we're sort of desaturating. And as we bring the point up, we're, we're saturating that color a little bit more. So let's bring that down. Let's move into our next point here. And we can sort of tweak that as well. Maybe I want to get a little bit less blue in there. Maybe the blue is a little too saturated for my liking. And then we can take this one here. And that looks like it's going to be adding a lot more greens for us here. So Let's just find a value that's not oversaturated and sort of play with these values until we find something that we're happy with. So I think that subtle adjustment is good. Now, one thing that you uh, can also do is using the side to side arrows, left and right keys, you can actually move that curve inwards too. So um, basically make fine uh, adjustments that way. Going into our B section, again, we can just um, pick some color points here. Now, in this case, I want to create a little bit of separation between these greens over here. So what I can do is once again, just using our picker, I'm going to pick this color value and this darker color value. And again, I can increase maybe this one a tiny bit and then go to this one and find a value that works for us here. 
Now it looks like we've again saturated the sky a little bit more, which I don't really want. So I'm going to click back into where the sky section is, so in this sort of blue color. That added a dot for us there, and I'm just going to bring that right back up. And that's going to pull some of the saturation that we added. So if we go down, essentially we're adding a whole ton of blues, and we don't really want that. So we're going to bring that right back up to get rid of that adjustment on there. So essentially, we, you know, very minor tweaks here, but we have actually made a considerable difference to the image. Now let's go ahead and add one more at this edge point over here and just see if that helps um, the look of our image. So if we drop that down, we start to take out some of the oranges we see in the sky there. So that, that's obviously not looking too good. But if we take it down a notch, that's starting to look pretty nice and uh, not overcooked. So even though this um, this curve here is really wonky, it's, you know, up and down and, you know, it, sort of sharp edge, especially if we go into our lightness section here, we've got, you know, this very angular line here, which we normally would not want to see in an RGB curve. Here in uh, in LAB mode, it works fine, and it gives you a nice result. So we close this up, and we kind of toggle on and off. We see that just with a curves adjustment, we've made a huge change to the look of the image. We've, you know, increased the contrast here very selectively within that particular color range, um, and, and not done so globally, uh, thanks to those small adjustments that we made on a color by color basis. So that's pretty much, let's say we're happy with that particular color adjustment and we want to take this image back into our original uh, file. So what we can do is take whatever adjustments and original image that we have, we're going to just select all of those, and we're going to convert to a smart object. So with our smart object created, uh, now what we need to do is essentially reverse the process that we took when we got the image in here in the first place, which is essentially just to uh, right click on that particular layer, click duplicate layer, give our layer a name, let's say we call it LAB, select our original file as our destination document, click OK, and if we go back into our original document we see that that file is now a new layer on top of the rest of the layers we have, and essentially if we want to make any additional tweaks to that, let's say we find that a particular area is too saturated, we can just make those adjustments as we normally would, so we can go into hue saturation, we can say we want to adjust the greens, sample this green, and let's say we want to desaturate it a little bit. So we can do that right through here, just like we normally would. So basically you're making the same saturations on an RGB level, um, essentially on top of this LAB smart object. So I hope you found that uh, tutorial useful. Uh, like I said, lab mode is a great tool for working on images like this, particularly landscape images or architecture images where you have a lot of different colors and you want to create a little bit more separation between those colors or adjust the contrast levels between those colors. So until next time, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel below and also check us out at facebook.com slash vibrantshot. Bye for now.